downward spiral. Anytime, watch this, you don't reverence God's worship service, you are hurting nobody but yourself. You ain't hurt nobody but yourself when you don't reverence God, honey. I'm trying to tell you. You ain't hurt nobody but yourself, dude, when you ain't reverencing God. You ain't hurt nobody but yourself. That's right. Because Isaiah had, let me be clear, here's something. God wants your worship, but doesn't necessarily need your worship. All right. Okay. That's right. But on the flip side, we need God's worship. Why? Because our blessings and our favor on our life are connected to his worship. Yes. Notice that as long as Isaiah was worshiping God, as long as he was honoring God, as long as he was doing what he was supposed to do, he was blessed. That's right. But the moment he disregarded God's order of worship, what happened? He was cursed. He was cursed. But even worse than that is that because he was a leper, he was banished from worshiping God in his house. I said that just to say this. Never take your worship opportunities for granted. Amen. I remember coming up in church and they used to scare the mess out of me. They used to say, praise him like this your last time. You don't know what's going to happen. And I'm like, oh man. They right. <laughs> that gets you to thinking, no, man, this might be my last time being able to worship God. I don't know what's going to happen in between now and the time I leave. Here's Jesus, help me. Oh, God, magnify you. You just go into worship then, boy. Amen. But what that meant was worship the Lord and give him all you got because this may be your last chance. Don't take your worship opportunities for granted like Isaiah. Isaiah took his worship for granted, but he ended up being banished from the presence of God forever because he ended up becoming a leper. Can you imagine what it's like not being able to call on him? Yes. Can you imagine what it's like not being able to exalt him and see his presence come all over you? Let me move on. Verse 2, watch this. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. What is a seraphim? A seraphim is an angelic attendant to the Lord, and they worship him continually. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. That's what a seraphim is. Did you put the definition up there? Okay, all right. The seraphim. Amen. I have to make sure she's right. She'd be true. Amen. Is an angelic attendant to the Lord, and they worship him continually. Now, what you see there is basically just an idea of what a seraphim is. Amen. We don't know what he looked like, but that's just an idea. And one thing about the seraphim is they are elaborately made with their six wings, and as they fly, it is said that fire comes from their wings. I want you to notice some. Uh, notice that. Notice the fiery look that these wings got. See that that fiery look. Uh, it is said that a, a seraphim, as he flies, fire comes from its wings. It has six wings. It's elaborately made. Watch this. However, as beautiful as a seraphim is. They never allow their beauty to distract them from their true purpose of worshiping God. Amen. They worship God, though they're beautiful. They worship God not because of how good they are, but because of how good he is. Amen. Watch this. Instead of the seraphim using their elaborate makeup to glorify themselves, they use it to glorify God. Watch this. They take two wings and fly around his throne, two wings and cover their face, and two wings and cover their feet. They understand that their purpose isn't to come in God's presence and look good. Amen. Though they look good, they understand my presence isn't to come in God. My purpose isn't to come in God's presence and look good. But watch this. We we do that, don't we? Amen. We come in God's presence 
And because we got our best outfit on, we can't give God all. Oh, man, that's my best suit. <laughs> that's why I don't wear suits no more. I can sweat this out and not think nothing about it. But if you got your best suit on, man, shoot, man, it's a hundred and fifty dollar tie. I got some gators on. I got this. Man, I ain't. I ain't gonna do all that with our cute self. Amen. The seraphim is elaborately made. Has every right to want somebody to exalt it, but it understands that its makeup is to exalt God and not itself. How about you take your cute self down somewhere and witness to somebody and exalt God with your cute self? Amen. <laughs> you too cute to give God your all. Amen. You too pretty to give God your all. You too handsome. You too dressed up. Mm -hmm. But the seraphim got six weeks. Mm -mm -mm. Could fly probably where he wanted to go. If he wanted to. But he understands that his makeup, the beauty of who he is, is to glorify God. But what's even more impressive than that is when they cover their feet and their face, they are saying that God is too holy for them to stand before and gaze upon. Who get this, get this. The seraphim is elaborate. But when they fly around God's throne, they use two wings to fly, two wings to cover their face, two wings to cover their feet. Those are acts of humility. They are saying, Lord, you too holy for me to even look at you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You too holy for me to even stand before you, so I'm going to cover my feet. All right. Amen. But we Come in God's presence and act entitled. <laughs> the seraphim says, Lord, <laughs> I'm in your presence, and as I'm in your presence, I have to constantly be careful not to do something to offend you. So I cover my face, I cover my feet, and I fly around you because I don't want to offend you. Yes, Lord. But we come up in here with our nasty selves, mm, been doing some of everything, and be act entitled to be here. Mm, thank you, Lord. Lord, bless me. Why should he bless you? Amen. Mm. You don't even honor him when you come in this house. Why should he uplift you when you don't honor him? The seraphim is awesome and knows his place. He knows, Lord, I don't want to offend you. I don't want to do anything. I, don't, I might look at you wrong. Let me cover my face. Yes. I might stand before you in a wrong way. Let me cover my feet. What you want me to do? Amen. All the seraphim does is worship. Worship, worship. Worship. But we want God to bless us. Give me a house. Give me a car. Give me this. Give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. <laughs> Don't act entitled in your worship. Be like, Lord, I, I'm trembling in your presence. Lord, yes. I, I don't even want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to think the wrong thing in your presence. I, I don't want to do the I don't want to make the wrong move. Yes. Let me tell you something. One day they were transporting the Ark of the Covenant, and uh, the Ark of the, Co of the Covenant, we went over this before uh, a while back in the, in, the, in the ministry. The Ark of the Covenant literally represented the presence of God in there. And so everywhere the Ark went, people was blessed. So they were transporting the Ark, and all of a sudden, a guy who wasn't a priest, the, the Ark stumbled, and a guy who wasn't a priest reached to catch it. He was just trying to catch the Ark to keep it from falling. Struck dead. Why? Because he made a sudden move in the presence of God. See, sometimes you just got to be still when you're in his presence. Don't say nothing. Don't move. Don't do nothing when you sense the presence of God. Because you might make a move that offends him. Now, he may not strike you dead. But something else might happen. The seraphim says, Lord, I don't even want to move like this. Lord, I'm going to cover my face. I'm going to cover my feet. I don't want to offend you. 
Verse 3. 